styling the titles they need to be adjusted a little bit so let's go and do that and let's go and look at our index first and what do we call them we, we called that widget title so this is where we have an h2 that it's really useful to have a class on because pretty much all the styling on our other h2s we didn't need to do very much on these right because when if we look back at our styles and we go all the way back up in our file here a lot of it is handled right here on this H2. We set up the font family, we set up that, we set up the color, we set up the margin, we did everything here, but we're still dealing with an H2. This one just happens to visually look completely different. So this is where it's really, really handy to have this. So we have all of our article stuff. Let's come right here. So widget title, and let's give this one a font size of one rem. The color is probably all right, but we need to change the font family over to Ubuntu. Just there we go. And we also want to make the font weight to be 700 because we want it to be not 7,000, 700. We want it to be bold. I don't even want to know how bold 7,000 might be. Um, so there we go. That's looking not too bad. Let's just go look back at the original design. Maybe the font size can be slightly bigger, but I'm going to stick with that. I'm pretty happy with it, actually, um, just based on looking at it visually. We want to style these now and actually change the order of things over here. So how can we do that? Let's go and take a look back at our markup and see how we did it. So we had a div of widget recent post, and then we have the order of our widget recent title. You know what? Uh, I actually think these widget recent title, so it's looking good. Now, these are too big, and I think these are actually supposed to be the same size as this. So let's come back up to our CSS file here. And widget title, I think what we could do is keep my widget title, but also have my post title. Don't forget the dot and give those the font, si uh, font size of one rem here. So we don't need to have it necessarily on that one. So that it helps shrink down those a little bit, um, just so visually they're not as in our face. Now, what you need to do is change the order of them, because this should be underneath the image and not on top of the image. It doesn't look great like now. The spacing is all off. So we've already looked at how we can do that when we did all those other order things. Give it a try. I hope you got it to work. If you didn't, let's go and look at our markup. The one reason you might not have is we have this widget recent post. So this widget recent post needs to have the display of flex on it so we can change the order of things that are inside of it. So I'm gonna come here. I'm just gonna go all the way down where we have our widgets because now I am looking at layout. Don't forget the dot at the front. And we can give this a display of flex. And when we do that, it will make columns. We don't want columns. So flex direction will become column. So the things inside are rows and they're stacking on top of each other. So it goes sort of back to how they were, but now we have the advantage of having the order on these. Now, realistically, I might not actually switch the order on them like I did here. Um, I might've just put image and then title. I think it's fine in the markup to do it that way. I just wanted you to practice a little bit more and play with the order a little bit more since it was a new concept coming into this project. So here we can say that my widget image has an order of negative one, and that should have jumped it over to the top. There we go. So we have that, we have that. Now we're just missing one thing. So we can see those here. There's these little, little thin lines that are coming in between on those. So we need a division here and a division here. There is a trick though, because this one, we don't want to do it. That's okay though. Uh, for now, add one here, add one here. I'm going to show you a trick to get rid of that last one. Okay, so let's go and add those in. I'm going to do it like I did before, where I'm just going to add a border. So we're gonna say border, one pixel solid. And for the color, we'll go with that dark gray that we've already been using. If we go and look at it now, we have a line. Oh no, it's on all four sides. I only want it to be on the bottom. So let's fix that right away and go look again. That's looking nice, but I need a little bit of space underneath and I want some space in here. So we can right away add a margin bottom and we'll just go with one M. You'll see, I use a lot of trying round numbers, one M, one and a half rem, two rem. It helps with the consistency um, along the way. And doesn't that just, there we go. That looks pretty good, I think. Except we don't want this one here. This one is going to cause us some problems. So instead of styling it like this, so I'm going to show you a trick, something we haven't looked at before. I'm going to do a widget recent post last child. So this is another pseudo class. This is like hover and active and visited, but it's saying if it's the last child inside of something, I'm going to say border 
zero and i'm going to say margin of zero because we want to take that margin bottom off so it doesn't add extra space so i'll explain this in a second but let's go and look and there we go now everything is getting balanced out we have a line here we have a line here but we don't have a line coming on this one at the bottom so to explain what this is in a little bit more detail let's go and look in my index so we have our widget our widget here and our widget here and this is the last child inside of this parent if i were to come and add a paragraph here example and we were to come back now that we have another item in there this is no longer the last child so this now has a border on it that's pretty fun right i think that's pretty cool so it's always about the state is this if there is a widget recent post that happens to be the last child somewhere, we're going to turn off that border and that margin that we just added here. But otherwise, they should always have it, just like when we're hovering on something. So we have a normal style in a certain state. And when our mouse is hovering on top of a link, we're changing the state. This, instead of looking at a mouse, it's looking at its relationship to its parent and to its siblings. So it's a really, really fun and cool pseudo class that can come up on something. So let's go and take out that extra paragraph that's on here. And I'm not going to save the, I'm going to do the footer now. I said, we're going to wrap up the whole thing. And then the footer is so nice and easy. I never even put the text in there. So there we go. We have our paragraphs inside the footer. And if we go and look, it's just has that text. The first one is bold. The second one isn't. So let's wrap this one up in a strong tag and close strong right there. And we can come into our styles. I'm going to come up a little bit here, all the way to here where I was doing like my header, my containers, all of that. I'm actually going to put the footer here because the footer is this really generic item um, that's just everywhere. So we're going to give this one the background of that dark blue. We're going to give it a color. Um, in this case, I'm going to give it white for now. I'm going to come back to this color later on when we're coming back in, in the next module of this course, um, stepping up our style, because we're going to show you a cool trick. If you set another color on it or want to actually, you know, use a color picker or get a specific value just to match that, that would be cool. When we do stepping up our style, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into this. Uh, a text align center on there and some padding. We'll go with a 3M and a zero because the padding looks pretty big on the top and bottom. And there we go. It is looking pretty good. The home page is all wrapped up and we're ready to move on to the other two pages, which are going to just 